This is the valley, a vanished world from a forgotten time. Here on the Welsh borders lies a remarkable farm, one that is trapped in time, being restored to how it would have been in the reign of James I, the year 1620. Here a unique project is about to take place. Five hand-picked experts are going to run it as it would have been 400 years ago. Working without any modern conveniences, they'll be toiling to make the farm work for a full calendar year. Over the next 12 episodes, we'll be following our team through the months and seasons, from the warmth of summer to the dark depths of winter, as they turn the clock back to rediscover a way of life from an age gone by. This farm, situated in a Welsh valley, was abandoned in the 19th century. Over 150 years later, a project began to restore it. Over the last 17 years, the foundations of a 17th century farm have been relayed. Although the site is taking shape, there is lots that still needs to be done in order for it to function as a fully working farm. Our team are going to take on the challenge. Although modern health and safety laws mean they can't actually live here, they're going to work here on a daily basis. They'll wear period clothing and cook and eat food from the era. They'll be turning theory into practice, doing everything by hand, using only tools and materials available in the year 1620. It's September, and after a few days settling in, now the team really have to get to work. This is the month that kicks off the agricultural calendar. The most urgent task is plowing. They need to get a crop of wheat into the ground if they're going to have anything to harvest next summer. Look at this. Come on, nearly there. As was common for small farms of the period, a team of oxen, Arthur and Lancelot, have been brought in to help. No problem. Their handler is John Johnston. Oxen were the mainstay of a lot of um, farms in the good old days and used to have teams varying from a pair up to eight. The, the competition was the horse, but at the end of the day, the horse in Britain wasn't eaten. And in Britain, we still eat oxen. Uh, and of course, that was the difference in economics. I've never actually ploughed before. I mean, I've read a lot about it, and, and certainly this plough looks the part, but you know, I'm really looking forward to this, see how this develops. Do you need a hand there, Martin? No, it's done. How's the plough looking? Not bad. Just back it up a little bit, please. That's it. All right. Get ready, boys. OK? Come on, steady, boys. Just walk on gently. Right. Walk on, boys. Walk Come on. on. Hold up. Come on. Walk Come on. on. Off we go. That's it. Good boys. Come, Come on, on, boys. Walk on. Walk on. Good, Good boys. boys. Good boys. These are English longhorn oxen, and these two are, as you can see, are about, about a ton apiece, which is a lot fatter than they should be. But they wouldn't let them get too thin because they needed the meat at the end of the day. But Arthur and Lancelot here are about uh, 12 and a half years old, and in theory they would work until they were about 15. Walk on. A bit rocky coming up, boys. Walk on. It's probable that nobody's Walk used on. a plough like this since the 17th century in this country, but we do at least have period diagrams and instructions from which we've been able to rebuild this one. An acre used to be the amount of land a man could plough in a day. So as we've got half an acre here to put down to grain, we should be finished by lunchtime. Come Just come now. Walk on. Walk on. Walk on. Off we go. Come on, boys. Walk here, on. Come on. Come on. Off Walk we on. go. Walk on. Get on. Get on. Get on. The ploughing is going on. slower than expected. At this rate, the team certainly won't be finished by lunchtime. They may be struggling to finish before nightfall. Hurry up there, go on, hurry up. Come on, Lance. You're lagging oh. again, aren't you, old boy? Come on, look. Come around, boys, that's it. Round, Good you boys. want to get this in position, yeah. Good boys, walk Using on. a plough is all about okay. technique. Walk on. Walk as well on. as maintaining a straight walk line, walk they walk have on. to make sure the plough drives walk deep on. into Good the boy. soil. Come on, that's Come on, that's Come the on Lance, a lot. Walk on. Go on, Lance. I'm doing a wee bit of plough surfing here, because I'm adding extra weight, because the uh, ploughshare kept bouncing out. But now the two of us putting the weight on it means it's biting, and we're getting some pretty good furrows, pretty deep. 
Look like modern plough furrows. Steady, Arthur, steady. Come on, boys. Walk on. Come on, Lancelot. Oh. Good boys. OK, we're coming to turn round. Right, jack out. Whoa! Whoa. A fresh dawn in the valley, and with the pressure of completing the cowshed now passed on to the thatchers, our team can get on with their next seasonal priority, getting the pigs out into the woods. This time of year, all the acorns are falling, the beech mast, hawthorn berries are coming down, and it's time to make the most of that by taking the pigs out into the woodland so that they can fatten up, because in a few weeks' time, we're going to slaughter them. Come on! Pigs are great on acorns. The only problem is, if they get too many of them, it can actually cause them to explode internally. So uh, this is the swine herd's job, making sure they get just the right mix. Hey! You're not with this! Pig in the undergrowth! We've lost a pig! Helping Keith with the cowshed roof is John Letts, an archaeologist who's been studying ancient thatching for decades. This bracken is going to be the permanent base coat that goes onto the thatched roof. Thatch is really made of these two layers, a permanent base coat that's never replaced, so it's always sheltered from the elements, and then a weathering coat of another material over the top. And bracken is a very unusual material to use. Um, it's certainly not been used for a century, century and a half at least. You can look at it archaeologically, you can, you can read about it, but actually doing it is something slightly different. It's full of thorns, full of spores, I'll be coughing all night, um, and that's certainly not recorded. Okay. Yeah. Right, we're now ready to fix the thatch onto the roof by using uh, hazel spars or pegs. And basically, these are then twisted. They have to be twisted and not bent, and that's the knack to it. You basically twist it into a hairpin. It's an incredibly difficult thing to start to learn, but once you've got the knack of it, you'll be twisting tree trunks. I'll find you an easy one, Alex. Easy one? Yeah. You start off with the, the smaller uh, sticks because it's just technique, really. But if you've got a fat one, you'll end up never being able to do it. That's right. Another, another little technique of doing it, some people, is double thumbs on the back of the bark yeah. and then pushing hands away from each other. Right. <laughs> Go on. I've tried, I've, tried, <laughs> I've tried quite a few of these and I keep breaking them and I'm worried that I'm just going to end up breaking them all. But, but how many have I... How many have I got to do, Keith? You'd be looking at about 3,000 by the time we finish this room. 3,000? <laughs> yeah, about 3,000. Don't bend. No, no, twisting, twisting. This is really hard work, this is. I can't... I mean, it's just not budging. 3,000. <laughs> and relax. <sighs> Red. Red war. Cheers, Keith. Rub it in. <laughs>